Hi everyone, welcome back to the US Individual Taxation Classes Enroll Agent Part 1. So we are in tax credit. This particular video is part 2 of tax credit which is in continuation of the part 1 which you have studied earlier. right? In this particular video we will be studying four types of tax credit. The first we will be studying the credit for elderly and disabled people. Second we will be studying credit for contribution to the qualified retirement plan. Third, we'll be studying the education tax credit, which include American opportunity tax credit, as well as the lifetime learning credit. The last topic we'll be covering is the foreign tax credit. So let's dive into to understand all the four category of tax credit in this particular video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the US taxation class. We are continuing with the tax credit last topic for chapter three so so far if you have seen like we have covered three important tax credit which is child tax credit child and dependent credit yeah sorry two we have covered so far but important thing of definitions we have covered which is dependent qualified child and qualified relative now we'll be jumping onto the third tax credit which yeah child independent we have done so third one yeah so we are moving on to the credit for elderly or disabled people this also we have touched base earlier in chapter one so we are just continuing or you know studying a bit more in details about those respective tax credit which we have covered in chapter one so credit for elderly and disabled people elderly people are those people who are age 65 and above Hmm. So, elderly people are the people who are age 65 and above. Disabled who are permanently or totally disabled. Right. So, the credit is 15% of the base figure after certain adjustments. So, whatever the expenses you have incurred for the benefit of elderly people as well as for the disabled people, in that there would be certain adjustment. You know, some amount required like maximum limit to so this much amount. You can do the expenditure for that particular item. So all those adjustments are required. And after that, whatever is the amount left over on that, you can consider 15% as a tax credit. So how do you calculate the base figure? That depends on the following factor. First, if you are a single hmm, and age 65, then dollar five thousand up to dollar five thousand you can consider for the credit for elderly and disabled people. That means if you are spending for any person who is more than sixty five year and you are filing as a single, then up to five thousand dollar you can spend, and of that five thousand dollar you will get fifteen percent as a tax credit. How much is that amount? $750. Make sense? 5000 multiplied by 15%. Second is disabled. Lesser of 5000 or disability income. If that person is earning some disability income, then you need to consider lesser of the disability income that person is earning or 5000. So that amount you will be considered as a base multiply by 15% which you can consider for the tax credit. If you are married and you are filing jointly, in that case of scenario, both, if husband and wife, if they both are more than 65 year age, then you can consider 7,500. If one is age 65 and above, then $5,000. If one is 65 and above and one is disabled, then lesser of 7,500 or 5,000 as the case may be plus disabled income. Hmm? One is disabled, then lesser of 5,000 or disability income, same as like in a single case. If both are disabled, then 7,500 or some of the disable income of both the spouse, whichever is lower. 
तो मतलब जो पर्सन जिसकी रिटर्न फाइल कर रहे हैं वो किस स्टेट से बिलोंग करता है और फॉर्म वन जीरो नाइन नाइन मिसलिनियस इनकम राइट इन दैट यू कैन वेरीफाई दैट अमाउंट थैंक यू सर थैंक यू नेक्स्ट इज इफ यू आर मैरिड बट यू आर फाइलिंग सेपरेटली इन दैट केस एज यू नो मैरिड फाइलिंग सेपरेटली इज ऑलवेज बी नॉट सो गुड स्टेटस फॉर टैक्स पर्पस हेयर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द डिफरेंस इफ यू आर एज सिक्सटी फाइव एंड अब ओनली थ्री थाउजेंड सेवन फिफ्टी instead of 5000 right and if you are disabled then lesser of 3750 or disability income right that can be considered as a base but the tax credit is base multiplied by 15% make sense yes yes, no? yes sir yes sir so okay. so what are the adjustment to reach to the base figure is social security payment you have made any railroad retirement pension if you have made any and half of the agi in excess of in case of single 7500 married filing jointly 10000 or married filing separately 5000 that is half of their respective income in excess of that would be considered as a base Hmm? Married filing separately may use the credit only if the couple have lived apart for the entire year. So, married filing separately can claim this tax credit only when they have lived apart for entire year. If they have lived together for some part of the year, and they are filing separate return. then they cannot claim this tax credit makes sense to consider this tax credit in your tax return as a married filing separately you must be living separately for entire year that is a mandatory condition makes sense yes sir yes cool so now jumping on to the fourth credit credit for adoption expenses adoption expenses what is adoption so in a layman language what do you mean by adoption god later hmm so when you are adopting someone what all expenses you expect you might be incurring or when your client is adopting any kid so what are the tentative expense he or she might be incurring attorney fees legal fees hmm attorney fees legal fees what else accommodating fees mm hmm adoption fees <clears throat> what else mm, if we putting in that some hostel then the hostel fees Sorry, Rajat, you are saying something. Sir, basic stuff like food, clothes, or maybe a room expense. Where no, that stay. that that will come in dependent care or child care. That is not adoption expenses. Adoption expenses are the expenses which you are incurring only for adoption purpose. <laughs> right yeah. ah vivek sachin yes sir yes yes sir so adoption expense include the adoption fees which you need to pay to the state any expenses which you need to incur and pay to the attorney for court fees any travel expenses you are incurring for going to the court going to the respective place or bringing your child back 
right? Any such expenses which you have incurred specifically while you are adopting. Hmm? And any re-adoption expenses to adopt any foreign child and other directly related expense would be considered. So that will be what all expense you can consider for the adoption expense. Second point is credit. How much credit is being available? How much credit you are being eligible? Expenses up to $14,440 is being eligible expenses. Right. If you are incurring more than 14,450 expense, 440 expense, then those expense would be above the limit and would not be considered as eligible for the tax credit purpose. Right. But if there is a child with a special need, is to be considered 450, 14,440. Uh, 14, even if the actual expenses are less. What does it mean? If your actual expenses are $5,000, then also you will get the benefit of $14,440 if the child is of special need. Make sense? Yes, sir, I have one question. Yes, is it a refundable or non-refundable credit? This is refundable. Okay, sir. Hmm. Qualifying children are those under the age of 18 and those who are physically or mentally <coughs> handicapped. And there is a phase out limit also. If your adjusted gross income is less than 216,660, then you can claim entire 14,450. But if your income is more than 216,660, then you need to phase it out up to 256,660. And your if income is more than 256,660, then zero adoption expense would be eligible for any tax credit, right? If your income is more than 256,660, then not eligible for any tax credit. If your income is less than 216,660, then entire 14,450 you are eligible. If your income is in between, then you need to apply phase out method. Simple? Yes, no? One by one. Divya, you are saying something? Sir, chapter one may be I think. Yes, yes, we did that. We covered all this. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know, like I think in chapter one we did more, uh, more than what was required. I think so. There's some overlapping. Many sir, one one thing. Ask. These are so typical digits. Why use it? I mean, straight up, fifteen thousand. Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? No idea. Yeah, it, depends. Six, 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 yeah. <laughs> it depends on many things, maybe like inflation index or maybe their you know other index which they might be considering as a base. So that will be like every year they increase certain amount based on the inflation index and other stuff. Okay. Hmm. So might be like when they have started, they might have considered as a normal number as a base. But every year, it might be multiplying by the inflation index. So that's how it is changing every year. Good point. <laughs> okay. Unused credit can be carried forward for five years. So, so far, if you have studied like last three credit, there was no carry forward provision. But here you have a carry forward provision also. Right? Married taxpayer must be filing jointly. If they are filing separately, they will not get the benefit of this. Right? Example of non-qualifying expense include those that violate the state or federal law are carrying out or any subrogate or parenting arrangement are for adopting taxpayer spouse, child, are paid for the reimbursement of the taxpayer employer or any other person or the organization are not considered under 14,440. What does it mean? Only the eligible expenses which you have discussed above in point 8 need to be considered for the benefit of this tax credit which is called credit for adoption expense. But if you are paying any illegal expenses 
right? Or if your expenses is being reimbursed by your employer, then in that case of scenario, you should not consider those expense as an adoption expense for the tax credit. Make sense? Yes, sir. <clears throat> And the exclusion is available like we discussed earlier, even if you have not paid for the entire expense, but that is for special child. Hmm? Let's do a practice question. Carmen and Joy have an AGI amount of 2021 for $125,000. They adopted a US child with a special need. Keep in mind, US child with special need by year end. What is the maximum adoption credit that couple can claim in 2021 as a result of the following expense that they have paid in the adopting a child? So when they have adopted a child, they have paid fee to the attorney. Will that be included? Yes, yes sir. Yes. Then adoption fees, 2,200, is it included? Yes. Court fees, $500 included? Yes. Travel expense, 750 Sir, all the expenses will be included. So how much amount they should claim as a base for the tax? <clears throat> so we Sir. don't have to see the figures on if straight away 14450 because the child is a special child. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. How much is the total expense they have made? Sir, even if the expense are less than 14,440, they can claim the whole 14,440 for the child has special need. Hmm. No, no, out, out, sir. Hmm? Right. Yes, four fourteen hundred four uh, fourteen thousand four hundred fifty. Hmm. Is the right answer? Right. So what it says: qualified children are those under the age of eighteen, or those who are physically or. No, sir. The child with the line above the child with special need is considered to be fourteen so fourteen. In fact, the expenses are less. Even if the actual expenses are less. Make sense? Okay, so we are good with this point also. Let's jump into the next topic, which is fifth topic, credit for contribution to a qualified retirement plan. Qualified retirement plan is IRA. It can be traditional IRA or it can be Roth IRA. Traditional IRA include both deductible and non-deductible, right? And Roth IRA is always be a non-deductible. And then we have 104K plan from the employer, 403B plan of annuity plan from employer, 457 plan, simple plan for small businesses, and SEP plan for the small and medium businesses, right? So up to $2,000 maximum credit, 50%, that is $1,000 is being allowed, right? And there's a phase out, no credit if AGI is more than 65,000 for married filing jointly, 48,750 for head of the household and 32,500 for all other, right? Very simple, straightforward, at the max 1,000 tax credit. So maximum amount, Base is $2,000 and maximum credit is 50% of the $2,000 of the contribution. So here, the contribution, either you can choose to be itemized deduction or you can choose as a tax credit, whichever is more beneficial to you. So you are being open to choose either in the itemized deduction or in the tax credit. But most of the time, I have seen the people use itemized deduction. Because here, the credit limit, limit is comparatively less. It depends again. Right? Are you guys with me? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. What it depends? Yes, 
you know if you are using standard deduction over there then at least $1,000 of tax credit you can consider here. So that will be a tax planning. Make sense? So you can, can use... Some, hmm? can feed so in the deduction side, you can use either a standard deduction or itemized deduction? Yes, sir. But you cannot use both? Yes, right? sir. That we have studied. So if you are using standard deduction for your client, and they have mm -hmm. contributed something to the qualified retirement plan, then mm -hmm. you can take the benefit of tax credit up to $1,000 and reduce their tax liability. No, sir. Yes, sir. That is what the tax plan is. That is what... Say that again. Standard mein thodi no, no, no. And hear me out clearly. What I'm saying, for example, for your client, you see the standard deduction is more beneficial than the itemized deduction. And you have recommended him or her to go with the standard deduction. Right? So in case of deduction, they have taken a standard deduction. Right? They have not taken itemized deduction. Make yes, sense? Sir. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. But now they have done certain contribution to the retirement plan. Okay. That you cannot go back and can claim itemized deduction because you have already chosen standard deduction. Okay. Okay. But that amount which they have invested mm -hmm. up to $2,000, you can mm -hmm. consider here for a tax credit purpose. And you can save $1,000 of tax up to $1,000 of tax. 50%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Make sense, Vivek? Yes. Hmm? Vivek, Rajat? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, one second. Do you have that chart which I have given you in very first class? for computation i'll show you again what i'm saying so if you remember this very first class we have discussed this computation of income so you can choose either standard deduction or itemized deduction yes or no yes sir. yes sir, yes. right so if you have chosen standard deduction then you cannot choose itemized deduction. Yes. Right. But you have your client has spent certain amount or contributed certain amount in the retirement benefit plan. Okay. Right. In that case of scenario, you can ask them to take a tax credit of those retirement benefit plan. So that will be benefited here. Up to one thousand. Up to one thousand dollar, regardless of how much they have. Yes, yes. Maximum limit is one thousand dollar. Right, one thousand dollar is eighty thousand rupees. Makes sense, huh? Devya, Vivek, Sachin. Yes, sir. Right. So now you know, like this chart, always keep in front of you. This is the most important chart. So this will keep you stick where exactly you you are studying. You know, ultimately we are we are reaching here, whatever the study we are doing for this only, right? So here it will keep you connected with the actual income tax computation at what part you are studying. So currently we are studying this tax credits, right? Okay, let's do one more question. What is the maximum retirement saving contribution credit a married couple can claim if they satisfy all the qualification? Easy Very one. Easiest <laughs> question on the earth. What is the call of the question? Yes, Mr. Mathur. Sir, that $1,000 is per person. 
What is the call of the question I'm saying? Just how much maximum retirement savings mm -hmm. a married couple can claim if they satisfy all the mm. how much they can claim two thousand mm. why because one thousand for one person no no. <laughs> That's a wrong answer. Yeah, Sachin, Rajat, Divya. Sir, because this is black. This is? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not right. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. But yeah, tell me what, what's your understanding? Yes, Mr. Rajat. Since the thousand dollars is not subject to a single person, that's what my thought was also. Right. No, what, what is the confusion here? What is the confusion you have here, Rajat? So, since all the uh, you know conditions are met. It says up to 2,000 max credit, 50% hmm. of it, that is 1,000. Ideally, it should be 1,000, but the correct answer is... What possible. is the call of the question? That's the reason I asked very first thing. What is the call of the question? What question is asking you to respond? If a married couple... Satisfies hmm. all the conditions. What, what is the maximum retirement savings for? Hmm? What is the maximum retirement savings for? Hmm? I have no idea. Why no idea? We have just studied. Yeah, Shubham, do you mind explaining? Savers credit is generally for the low income families. And um, and as in the question, it's mentioned that the persons are filing MFJ. So, sir, you, so, so the maximum they can file, they can claim is the 50% of their annual contribution. No, 50% is being tax credit, but base is 2000. Yeah, yes. So, sir, you say, so 2000. Yeah, sir, the base amount. That is the call of the question. What is the maximum retirement saving contribution a married couple can claim? So, $2,000. So, yeah. Right? Tax credit will be 50% of that. But what is the maximum yeah. contribution they can claim is $2,000. Got it. That is the call of the question. Credit is 1000 but the total amount is 2000 Right? Okay. Hmm? Divya, Vivek, Sachin? Shubham? Yes, sir. Base is 2000 How much is the Maximum retirement saving contribution will be considered for the tax credit. Should be considered for the tax credit, right? So, sir, is couple ke liye limit hai ya individual ke liye? Couple, couple. So, this is what they are saying. Credit for contribution to the qualified retirement plan. Up to $2,000 
मैक्सिमम क्रेडिट फिफ्टी परसेंट विच इज वाले में कहीं कपल का वो नहीं है ना मेंशन नो 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 आई आई एम कमिंग टू दैट बट हियर इज द थिंग फेज आउट इफ यू आर अ मैरिड फाइलिंग जॉइंटली इफ योर इनकम इज लेस देन सिक्सटी फाइव थाउजेंड डॉलर देन यू कैन क्लेम हंड्रेड परसेंट इफ यू आर मैरिड फाइलिंग सेपरेटली देन And if you are filing as a head of the household, then forty-eight seven fifty. It has been mentioned here. All the three seaters, right? So two thousand for whatever the category you belongs to. But if your income is above this th threshold limit, then you need to phase it out. Right? Makes sense. ऑलरेडीडी reiterating the same thing over here so education tax credit are non refundable category of tax credit what are non refundable tax credit jo cash mein nahi mil sakta hai right so which can be adjusted only against the tax payable but you will not get refund of it hmm? so there are two category of education tax credit one is american opportunity tax credit second is lifetime learning credit so american opportunity tax credit first let's understand left hand side the credit is up to 2000 dollar of expense 100% that means 2000 dollar full and after that additional 2000 dollar that means 4000 dollar maximum limit minus 2000 dollar for which you have you can claim up to 100% minus Twenty five percent of the maximum credit. That means two thousand five hundred dollar is the maximum tax credit you can avail. Does that make sense? Yes. Hmm. Everyone. Yes. Or shall I do some math for you? ये two thousand five hundred कैसा है दोबारा बता दीजिए. Oh, 2000 so first two thousand, you will get hundred percent, right? And then four thousand minus two thousand, which you have already claimed. For this Mr. remaining two thousand, it is twenty five. Clear over. Thank you. Mm. Second is eligible. Who all are being eligible? First is enrolled at least one and a half time during one academic year. This is for student who have who are being studied in the college, school, or university. So almost more than half a year, the student should be enrolled in that academic year with the school, college, or university. Second is he or she. Might be must be pursuing a degree or recognized educational credential. Third is not have completed four year of higher education. That means like in India, bachelor's is how many year three years, but in US it is four year bachelor degree. So they are saying if the student have completed their bachelor degree, then they are not eligible for American Opportunity Tax Credit, right? D point is not have claimed the credit for more than four tax years. So maximum time you can claim this tax credit is four year in your life. So if you have already claimed four year in the fifth year or sixth year, you cannot claim the American Opportunity Tax Credit. Makes sense. Who all are being eligible? The person who is studying in the college or university must have not completed their bachelor degrees. Right, they have not availed this benefit for more than four years. Right, 
and not convicted of any drug at the end of the year. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is the phase out limit? Maximum AGI, AGI for single 80,000 and merit filing jointly 160,000. No credit if it is more than 90,000 for single phase out limit is 80,000 to 90,000 for merit filing jointly 160 to 190. So almost double. Right? Merit taxpayer must file jointly. If they are filing separately, they cannot claim this tax credit. Make sense? For a head of house award, single gina jayega sir? Usman merit file. Single, yes. Head of house award bhi nahi le sakta? Sing, uh, they, will, they will claim 80 to 90,000. Okay. They come under the category of single. Right? So now, any doubt on American Opportunity Tax Credit for education purpose? This is majorly for higher education. Any doubt here? How much is the maximum amount you can claim? 2500 Okay. If you are a if you got if your client is being convicted under the drugs, so can you claim that two thousand five hundred for him? No, sir, no. No. If your client has already claimed for four years, can you no. claim in fifth year? No. If your client has already passed the degree higher education of four year, can you claim no. this American opportunity tax credit? No. Right, everyone. Yes. Okay, so right hand side is the lifetime learning credit. So this is for any kind of study, basically. Yeah. So credit is 20% of the expense up to $10,000. That means maximum $2,000 of tax credit. Total expense you can incur up to $10,000, but whatever the expense you have incurred, 20% of that you can claim for the lifetime learning credit. That's a maximum limit. So this can be claimed for any number of students in the family. So if you have 10 childs, you can claim for all 10 of them. Hmm? Available for unlimited number of years also. It's not restricted for four years. And it is being applied for undergraduate, graduate, postgraduate, professional degree, course at an eligible institute to improve the job skills. So all kind of courses is being covered under the lifetime learning credit. Ye EM course cover hoga, sir, isme? Yes, yes, yes. That comes under the D category course at an eligible institute to improve the job skill. Okay, sir. Very good point. Does not require half-time enrollment for the semester. So, this does not require that half of the year you'll be studying in those institutes. It can be for week or it can be for month, it can be for quarter, something like that. Hmm? And then fees out limit is slightly less here if you see. For single, 59,000 to 69,000. Married filing jointly, 118,000 to 138,000. Is there one time I have? Any time, every year, every year you can claim. Okay. No limits. Right? What is the maximum lifetime learning credit you can avail? 2000. 2000. What is the maximum expense you can incur? 10,000. Right? For what all courses you can incur this? Any course. In. What what is the phase out limit for individual single? Sixty nine. Mm -hmm. What is the phase 000. out limit? No, fifty nine to sixty nine thousand, right? Yes. Sir. What is the phase out limit for merit filing jointly? Ninety thousand to one eighty thousand. No. One one eight two one. Yeah. So this is for lifetime learning credit we are discussing, okay. right? Is the uh, and then uh, how many students can claim this in a family? Any and number of students. How many years you can claim this? Any number of years. Right. Right. So you are all set. 
Okay, next one is foreign tax credit. What is foreign tax credit? We have studied this earlier also. When we have me. earnings in a foreign country when, and we have paid taxes on the other country. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyone else? Rajat, Vivek, Sachin. What is foreign tax credit? When we have income in foreign. Mm -hmm. And we have paid it taxes on, tax on that income. Okay. Yeah. So tax credit basis double tax avoidance agreement treaty between US and other country on the taxes paid in foreign country for which income is taxable in USA also. Right? If income is not taxable in USA, then you are not required to take any foreign tax credit. But the income which you have earned in foreign country, and that is also being taxable in US, then only you can take the foreign tax credit. Second important thing is, a taxpayer may apply income taxes paid to foreign country or US profession as a credit against the US tax liability or may use such taxes as an itemized deduction. So here the individual have both the option. Either you can consider foreign tax paid as itemized deduction or you can consider foreign tax paid in the tax credit also. So here also like same way how we discuss about contribution plan. Either you can choose in the itemized deduction or you can consider for the tax credit purpose. Same way this also. Foreign tax credit, you can either choose into the itemized deduction or you can consider for the tax credit benefit. Hmm? So, so IRS tax credit, mm -hmm. tax credit can only be US citizen or LPR here. Yeah? Say that again. So taxpayer can only be US citizen or LPR. LPR means the <laughs> lawful green permanent card holder. Agent. Yeah, green card holder also, yes. So green okay. card holder, we say LPR. What is full form of LPR? Lawful permanent Law. resident. Low? Lawful. Lawful permanent. Lawful. Lawful immigrant. Yeah, lawful permanent resident. Lawful permanent resident. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so both. Both. Yeah. Right. So here the credit is lower of tax paid in foreign country or tax payable on foreign income taxable in US, whichever is lower. So for example, if you have $100,000 income from Europe and in Europe you have paid, let's assume, 20% taxes on that. That means $20,000 you have paid taxes in Europe and you are a citizen of US and your global income is being taxable in US. So that $100,000 which you have earned in Europe, that is also being taxable in US. And now when you are clubbing that income in US, income tax rate, let's assume is 25%. Then you need to pay $25,000 taxes in US, right? As you have, as the US government and the Europe government have double tax avoidance treaty or agreement. So it says that $20,000 which you have paid in Europe, you can take the tax credit of that. Only the differential, which is, how much amount? How much amount? What is the tax rate in US we discuss? Sir, whichever is lower. No, no. I am saying in our example, what is the tax rate in US we discussed? 25%. 25% on 100,000. How much is the amount? 25,000. 25, and how much you have paid in Europe? In our example? 20,000. 20,000. What is the difference? 5,000. 5,000 is the payable only. You are not required to pay entire 25,000. You are required to pay only 5,000. Hmm? Let's assume other way around. Let's assume other way around. In Europe, you have earned $100,000 income. And you have paid taxes of 20%. How much you have paid in Europe? $20,000. $20,000, right? Now in US, your income is taxable at a rate of 15%. 
So in that case of scenario, how much is the tax payable in US for the foreign income? 15,000? Yes? No? Yes. Yes, right? yes. So your tax payable in US is 15,000, but you already paid 20,000. So in that case of scenario, you are not required to pay any additional taxes. But at the same time, you'll not get any refund also. Make sense? Yes, sir. So, आगे के लिए forward नहीं होगा वो? No, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Right? Shall we move on? Yes, General, sir. general business tax credits. So, it has like six category: investment credit for rehabilitation, work opportunity credit. Research activity credit, low income housing credit, disabled access credit, and employer provide child care credit. So, deduction of the total general business expense is lower of your regular income tax minus alternative minimum tax or $25,000 plus 75% of regular tax minus $25,000. Whichever is lower. Right? So, whichever is lower is the maximum amount you can consider for the general business tax credit. So, first you need to identify individually how much amount is being eligible for the business tax credit. Then you need to club together, right? And then you need to see how much is your regular tax and alternative minimum tax. You need to minus your regular income tax to alternative minimum tax, identify the amount, or you need to calculate 25,000 plus 75% of the regular tax minus 25,000. So out of this, whatever is lower, maximum that amount you can consider for the journal business tax credit for all the six items. You cannot go beyond that. For example, let's do a quick math. Let's assume you have regular tax of let's say 50,000, let's say 100,000, let's say 60,000 hmm? dollars. You have regular tax, 60,000. You have EMT. What is EMT? Alternative minimum tax. Let's assume that is $20,000. How much is the difference? $40,000. That is your first point. Regular tax minus EMT. Then second point it says $25,000. Plus, plus, 75% of 75% of your regular tax. How much is regular tax? 60,000 minus 25,000. Right? So, how much is the amount here? So whichever is lower, which one is lower? 40,000? Are you getting the point? Hmm? Vivek, Rajat, Sachin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes. how we have calculated 26,250? Hmm? 75% of the regular tax minus $25,000. Yes, yes. Right? So, this is your option 2. And this is your option 1. So, you need to choose whichever is lower. So, lower is 40000 This is what it says. Deduction 
of total journal business credit is lower of regular taxes minus AMT or $25,000 plus 75% of regular tax minus $25,000. Whichever is lower. So which one is coming lower? $40,000? Yes? No? Yes. So now let's assume you have investment for rehabilitation. Let's assume $5,000. Then you have work opportunity. And then you have research activity. And then you have low income housing credit. And then you have disabled access credit. And then you have employee provided child care. Let's assume you have this six category of business tax credit, general business tax credit. Hmm? Let's assume this is 5,000, this is 6,000, this is 8,000, this is 10,000, this is 15,000, sorry. And this is, let's say 2,000. Hmm? So this is total general business tax credit you have how much is it how much is it Forty-six thousand. Forty-six thousand. so how much maximum you can claim Forty thousand. Forty thousand. make sense huh vivek sachin rajat yeah. 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 so you need to look at individually how much amount all the six have right and then you need to look at holistically what is the total amount of general business credit. Then compare that with the maximum limit. If it is 36,000, let's assume this is zero. So they have 36,000. Then which option you should have been selected? 36. 36,000. Makes sense, everyone? Yes, sir. Right? So that's what it says. The deduction of total journal business expense is lower of regular tax minus AMT or 25,000 plus 75% of the regular taxes minus 25,000. Any unused credit may be carried back one year and carried forward. How many years? 20 years. So this unused credit can be carry back and carry forward. What is carry back? What is carry back? Like apply to last year's tax return. Hmm. Apply to? If any tax liability hmm. in last year return, then used this credit hmm. any assessment further hmm. sorry i i didn't get it say that again vivek uh, oh, sachin uh, sir carried back se matlab jo mujhe samajh aa raha hai uh, if uh, agar hamari koi assessment hoti hai last pichle pichle saal ki aur usme koi liability nikal ke aati hai so, mm -hmm. this credit, credit use hum kar sake. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I'm going to How about others? Rajat, Vivek, Shubham? Same as the how, how you can go back? Can you claim the refund if you go back? I don't know. I don't कई बार रह जाती हम्म गलती से हम्म ना अग्रीड अग्रीड बट इफ यू हैव नो लायबिलिटी इन प्रीवियस ईयर कैन यू गो बैक एंड क्लेम द रिफंड इसके सर वो फिर नेक्स्ट ईयर में यूज हो जाएगा ना हमारे 
नो सर जो हमारे पास लास्ट ईयर की लाइब्रेरी नहीं है तो स्टिल हमारे पास जो हमारे नेक्स्ट ट्वेंटी इयर्स है उसका ऑप्शन तो है ना हमारे पास उसमें कोई यूज हो जाएगा रिफंड Right, so it's a tax advantageous position. So it means that it's a uh, refundable. Yes, it is. So can you please put the note down below on this thing? Hmm. Ah, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, in this, one thing is that if we use it for the next 20 years, we can't use it. Then will it be refunded? No, after that it will expire. Yes. 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 तो फिर सर ये तो मिक्स बात होगी दोनों नो लाइक इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू यूटिलाइज द टैक्स क्रेडिट इन फ्यूचर 20 इयर नहीं जब 1 इयर का दे सकते हैं तो आगे का भी दे देना चाहिए नो लाइक कैरी बैक मींस लाइक प्रीवियस ईयर यू कैन सेटल फ्रॉम योर पास्ट टैक्सेस एज वेल एज इन द प्रीवियस ईयर टैक्स रिटर्न यू कैन अपडेट एंड क्लेम द रिफंड when you have an option to update the previous year tax return that option is being given only when you can claim the refund but carry forward yeah you can say it's a hybrid present as in tax planner you need to see which one is more beneficial to your client 